This week we get the third installment of the Divergence series, which, if you're keeping score, is not the last installment. Thanks to Harry Potter, The Hunger Games, and The Hobbit, producers have decided to split their last episodes into two, thus making more money and extending the profits over two years, not one. Now, you probably know this is a bad idea, but that doesn't stop director Robert Schwenke from dragging things out just to get the bonus. You ready? In Allegiant Part 1, Triss and friends figure out a way to get outside the wall that surrounds their city, only to discover a toxic-looking desert and a force field. The travelers are taken to what seems like Chicago's O'Hare Airport and introduced to what really has been going on in the futuristic world. Now, apparently the government started messing with human DNA so certain traits wouldn't exist. That idea backfired and the land was turned into a wasteland. Nothing creepy about that. Who's behind it? And what does the future hold? Well, that's where Allegiant comes in. While Shailene Woodley and Theo James are an attractive couple, they can't mask what looks like a pretty dull movie. Because it doesn't end in one sitting, this is like all those mountain climbing episodes of Lord of the Rings. If there's still an audience for Divergent, even they will get bored. Still, Woodley has a new hairdo, Jeff Daniels arrives as a new boss, and Miles Teller still gets to make snarky asides. Allegiant Part 1 isn't the place you want to start if you haven't seen this series, but it sure will cure you of ever running away from home. After two hours of nothing, that controlled world run by Kate Winslet doesn't seem so bad after all. And also this week, Jennifer Garner gets one of her most complex acting assignments in years. In Miracles from Heaven, she plays a mom who does everything she can to get help for her daughter, Anna. You, you calm down. You find me another doctor, you run some more tests. I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. The girl suffers from an intestinal disorder and requires the skill of an expert. Now, unwilling to settle for local speculation, mom hunts down the expert, learns there's nothing he can do, and waits. Then another emergency occurs and the girl is miraculously cured. Was there divine intervention or just a natural resolution? Director Patricia Riggin, who based this on Christy Beam's autobiography, goes with the former theory suggesting this was a miracle. That opens up plenty of other discussions and introduces Queen Latifah as a wise cracking waitress who gives the heavy film some much needed levity. While Garner's facial expressions convey a multitude of concern, Miracles from Heaven is hardly complex. Like Heaven is for real, this simply puts its faith in God and comes away with two hours of tears and gratitude. It's a simple film, but best of all, Miracles from Heaven doesn't take four installments, a couple of world wars, and a sneaky diversion to wrap up. Surprising? Well, that may be the biggest Hollywood miracle of all. With your Movies in a Minute, I'm Bruce Miller.